Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to James and Flav for now. I'm going to go straight into a top comment, but we have some interesting talking points. And of course, our beloved patrons who are in the live chat right this second can add to those um, because it's, it's a free flowing podcast this week. The uh, We've obviously had the international break. I've got some new ideas. We've got some good tweets that we put out there. We've got some new headaches for Southgate after the uh, the last game yesterday, which we'll touch on briefly because I know a lot of people are a bit sick of all of that stuff. Uh, but Alcott got on the way at the start of the international break and got himself a banger of a squad selector, which of course you can go and enjoy. Uh, Man City versus Arsenal. Uh, we can touch on that massive, massive game. But how massive? Just how specifically in, in metres and inches, how massive? Top four uh, or five battle resumes uh we'll talk about relegation briefly as well and i've got a question here i've decided to chuck in who's the best pro league manager never to win the premier league got a list of names we'll find out interesting the just that feeling that. how massive that game is like when you think about it holistically sure step the back fact that football is never ending and and, and, and never uh, you know it, it is all all it was it's perpetually cyclical mm. um it really doesn't matter at all. It's just another game in a never-ending stream of games of okay. which one day we'll all die and that's it. We'll need 15 minutes on it though, Flav, if that's okay. Um, so that'll, that's okay. so that stick around for that. Stick around for that. That'll bring... There's a new thing on YouTube, right? You've got these... There's this new thing, retention bar, where it shows... It'll give you a line where the new viewers, someone new to the channel, so someone you, you right now, watching this, going, who are these two guys? They seem like lovely chaps. He's got a lovely bright shacket on there. Maybe they both could have worn a shacket. Truth is, I've just taken my shacket off. And he, look, he looks a bit like... A, you know, he looks a bit like a fat Harry Potter. He seems nice enough. I might stick around for a bit with these two. There's Bimbo. this, that person, you... There's a retention line for you, and then there's a retention line for returning people who've been sort of beaten down by us over the years, and um, okay. I, and I fear we've lost a few just then. But stick uh, around, not, stick around. Can I, let, let me let me re, rephrase it or or, re, or move it on. Then did you hear? Did you see that Declan Rice said to um, John Stones, "Like it's a big game Sunday, isn't it? It's a big game." <laughs> John Stones, is it? Yeah, who are we playing? <laughs> You're us. Your lot. Oh, right. is it? Is it? Yeah. Doing so a power move, isn't it? Power move, you're listening. Is it, so <laughs> is it a power move? So what does it say to you, Jim? Is it a power move or is it that they, the way Manchester City and Guardiola operates, certainly in the messaging they're given to their players, is it just, this is our system, this is where we play, regardless of who, who, who we're against? Or should he as a footballer, know that they're playing Arsenal in a, what it could decide the title race. I think it honks, of, think? honks of a power move for me. Honks of a power move. What it does probably what say... Right what it does probably say is, you know, like, I used to do this with Brentford before they, we got usurped by Brentford. We were like, oh, is it... It's uh, like my mates were Brentford fans. They're like, oh, QPR Brentford soon. I was like, oh, is it? Tiny little <laughs> Brentford can give a shit, mate. And I, mm. I think what it's saying here is that Man City are still the A-side and Arsenal want to be the A-side. Obviously, they're just young pups, just giddy, desperate to get out of the kennel into the big wide world of Premier League titles. And John Stones is, you know, just out there, just, you know, with his bollocks out, enjoying himself and has been for you know, five years. James, you know, you know what, there was that conversation that. between, <laughs> between uh, Declan Rice and Manchester City and Arsenal and it looked like he might be going to City. Imagine if he'd gone. But he ended up, well, this is what this is my question: Was it would there even be a title race now if he if Rice was at City? No, 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 no I don't think there would. I don't think. I think they'd be miles off. Do you know what? As well, why would the fuck did they let them go then? <laughs> yeah, well, because they paid a lot of money for him. Do you think would Declan Rice be in the England? Would his England squad place be under threat if he'd went to Man City and wasn't playing? I mean, you probably have some impact because we, you needed. No, I mean, no. He, he saw his quality at West Ham. If he was going to live, uh, uh, you know, well, I'm saying not playing. You're talking about he'd only played ten games this season. Then you might have to look at how fresh he's going to be, or, or ready rather, he's, he's going to be. I'd love to have some. I wonder if there's any, any examples people can think of whilst we're chatting here of players that were playing for England, starting for England, comfortable for England. Everything was fine. Everything was rosy. They made. They made a move and then they weren't really getting in the team 
I've got a name now, actually. And, Calvin and Well, yeah, so, yeah, Calvin Phillips. Maybe, I think yeah. Calvin Phillips wasn't com- – I wouldn't say he was comfortable. People were saying we, you can kind of do better than him, although he, like, he did very well in the Euros. Raheem Sterling is – is kind of one, but there's maybe other circumstances in that where you've got a lot of good players uh, in those positions. I did um, I did a podcast with uh, Neve Stumpeg yesterday, and we were we were ranking uh, every England player with over ten starts under Southgate, and Sterling. I watched um, I quickly watched the <coughs> every goal from every uh, England tournament under Southgate, and. What it it made me really, really worried. It made me quite concerned about having players in enough players in the box to score the like ugly little tap in goals, because Raheem Sterling scored a lot a lot of those goals, and Raheem mm. Sterling is the same person, and he's still in the peak of his career, but he's gone into a like shit storm that is Chelsea, and mm. now. The guy who's played more games under Southgate than any other player, he's like completely has been completely frozen out. So it's a funny one. If um, Andy Carroll was Andy Carroll ever really starting for England? I'm not sure that happened. I don't know how many. How many... <laughs> uh, didn't did wasn't there like an agreement, a decision that that Southgate made? I remember that when when Sterling came back into form because when he first moved to to Chelsea. Or say certainly when I think maybe Potter came in, or it maybe it had been the beginning of Pochettino's reign, he had a purple patch. He was he was one of the outliers of form, and people were talking about he should be brought back into the England squad. And Southgate goes, I'm paraphrasing, but he says oh, we've made our decision. Like this isn't. Do you, do you remember this conversation? I so don't remember that. Like... I remember him doing well, and I remember it feeling unfair was... that he wasn't in the squad. Um, and and they, I always thought he was going to come back. Southgate. Yeah, this question was posed to Southgate, and it was all the, the impression you got was. That's done. That bit's done. Right. Like what we're building, that there's no place for Sterling. That's that's what it felt like. You know? That's interesting. And, and if there was an agreement that that maybe it is at the end of his time at England, then maybe he shouldn't be brought back. Like, is there any world where Ben White should ever be brought back to England? He ain't loyal. When you get a call up, you get a call up, and you Absolutely do as you told. You do yeah, honestly told. between between us, Jim, just between me and you, like no one else. Don't let anyone else hear this, right? But. Mm. There would be a little bit of me. You know what I like? I like I like being at home. Like sometimes the opportunities like say, Do you wanna go to do you wanna go and do this in another country? And I'm like, nah, I'd shoot myself in the face. Mate, do you know what it's, um, it's a great it's a really good point. Right. So I you I love international breaks. Which I, t- I tell you about all the time because no, I can no, switch no. off. You can switch off a bit, right? But if I got called up for England YouTube, I'd be like, Oh fuck off. <laughs> like, I just want to break. Would you? Yeah, I'd be like, yeah. you know, I might go and do it if it's this prestigious honour. But also, I think if you if you're going and you're like, well, hang on, I'm not really going to start here, am I? I'm just going to sit here and train. When exactly. I could, be, I could be in Dubai getting my eyebrows am I, threaded. Am I getting paid for this? I think I've got, give it, I've got to give it to charity, and I've got to be away from my wife and kids for two weeks. That's it. Ima- imagine what's Ben White on, like at least hundred grand a week, right? Imagine. Yeah, easy. easy. Right. It was just a new right. deal, wasn't he? So to then, yeah, to then go and, and waste the, the this this break that's been given to you, <laughs> to not play and not be paid because they give their money to the charity, which I think is lovely. It, the I I kind of I kind of get it as things change and 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 wiggle about. It's like especially feeling, if like he's not feeling it, but I would love to see him. Do you know what? From the games that we saw, I think there is a space there. For him to just play as a centre back with John Stones, that just would be he, lovely to see. He's, he hasn't played any centre back football. No, I know he hasn't, but I don't. I, I don't think that means he can't do it. So out of Colwell, Gay, Ben White, who's played as a right back for two years, is, is better options than both of those. I what think Bramfweight. Bramfweight is Bramfweight's coming. Same. I think it's a bit early for Bramfweight personally. I think in that so, position, I like a bit more. I like a touch more age. How old is he? He's young. He's young enough. He's 21. on his way. He's on his way. He's old, Yeah, he's old enough. He's good. He's young enough. He's good enough. He's old I think, enough. Look, if you're old enough, you're good enough. I've always said that. Uh, that's yeah. a joke. It's from Mike Bassett. Let's call that as a Samism, <laughs> which actually we should, we should touch on that. Bit of a niche joke again for the new viewers. Don't leave, don't leave, don't leave. Uh, Samisms have been a very big thing for a long time, but we, on our mailbag this week, made the exact decision that we are calling it a day with Samisms. We've done the joke. We understand it. And we will all think of each other and go, hmm. 
mm. when whenever a Samism arrives, but it's it's playing on our minds, it's playing on our hearts, and it's playing on our mouths, and we need to just sort of step back from that now. I've um, been sick of them for about two years, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, see that bees, you know, he's a consummate pro, so he just sort of gets on it and just go, <laughs> good. Uh, That's it. I noticed yeah. that, didn't I? In the mailbag, if yeah. Flav does a short good, it's like bothered, not bothered. Mm. Move on. Good, Jimbo. Yeah. Like I want to talk about this international break mm-hmm. because these, that result against Brazil, as you said in the mailbag, become a patron if you want to hear that. Uh, if you want to, no, you said no, in the mailbag, it doesn't. The not the Brazil result doesn't really matter, right? And you're right. This experimental that isn't nowhere near going to be the side that plays. Give players an opportunity. Belgium game exactly the same thing. It doesn't matter. And my point is, Jim, is if it doesn't matter, and I genuinely with you here, mate. I believe that it doesn't matter, then why do it? Especially when you're in the tail end of the season where it's starting to heat up. Do we then have to be bored into nothingness for two weeks because Southgate needs a bit of time with his squad? I, do you know what I would time? say? What about this, right? No games. Yeah. You meet up. Because it's, it's preparation, right? It's preparation. That's fine. Yeah. Just meet up. Like me up and, and I guess look, it all comes back to money, and you want to have friendlies to give people games to give them opportunities. Like Kobe made it in over like stepping at Wembley and playing those, uh, you know, in those arenas is good because then down the line he's done it already. So that's that's right, helpful. How often you do you chance. see some of these periphery players do this in these games beforehand and maybe never play for England ever again? Lewis Dunk will never pull that shirt on again ever. We know that. We all know that. So what the fuck is he doing there? There's a couple I think have played their way out of the squad actually, and I, I was like, you know, I love a squad selector, I do, and I, I was thinking that's probably my last squad selector. I'm not sure now because I, here's one for you. Like in terms of like the Declan Rice thing, I was saying, yeah, in another world, he goes to Man City. He's not the first choice because Rodri's the first choice. Maybe he's playing alongside him and he wants to be like this eight, and he's or maybe he's the, maybe he's like a. John Stones, maybe he wants him to turn him into that in some way. That could be interesting as well. But anyway, it, like, or he just doesn't play. The perception of him is very different. And so I was watching the game yesterday and I thought, if Jared Bowen was playing for Liverpool, and what I'll say to caveat this before, when I did my squad selector, I, I didn't focus on him. I didn't think about him. And I sort of skipped past him and a few people were annoyed. And, I, and I, That's fine. Um, and I was like, yeah, but I, I think he's just missing out. He played, and I was thinking, if he was playing for Liverpool, people would be losing their minds about how great he is because he has he, such he, energy. I, I, I really, really enjoyed him in that game. I, I, I know what you're saying, and I, and I, and I um, he's underrated, and it's weird that that him, the fact that he's playing for West Ham, should be such a seismic thing in deciding whether or not he's good enough to play for England and clearly he is because he played and should have you know he had a goal but it got ruled out but mm. the problem Jared Bowen has isn't necessarily that we're asking the question whether he's good enough to play for England he clearly is it's just you know he's not going to get in ahead of Saka and even Foden if he plays in that right hand side also so. the question I put out on Twitter and the, 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 it was it's so people started to sway I think a little it's bit dis- towards it's Bowen. not disrespectful that's what I'm saying it's not it's not as disrespectful as it seems yeah, 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 you're right. I actually I had that same conversation with Neve where it's like, well, is it one where it's like, oh, I can't believe these guys have fallen off this way? Say like Jaden Sacho, who's not near the squad right now. Yeah. Or is it just going, well, actually, we're, you know, England have got so much depth now, especially in those areas, that it just kind of is what it is. Um, but with Bowen, the other thing I started thinking about was in terms of like players that we've got, because it's it could be down to him versus Cole Palmer. And Cole Palmer's great. Like, we know he's great, right? But if mm. you kind of know who your starters are or <coughs> your first 13 are, anyone else who's coming on, you they have to come on to affect the game. And so in terms right. of affecting the game, there's a coolness about Cole Palmer, but if you're playing against a low block, that might be of use. But what I really liked about Jared Bowen is his energy. He sort of scurries yeah. and he changes the tempo of the, the the moment of, of whatever yeah. passage of play it is in a game that can be quite slow, and like the Brazil game in particular was very, very slow. And so with that in mind, is those players that are not going to start but are going to come on, do you want a player who... I also think Jared Bowen would be like, I'm buzzing to be here, let me affect the game. And that's why he was so good mm. yesterday, I think. Whereas I wonder, and I'm not, I'm, I'm 
projecting a little bit here, but you wonder, would he be a better sub to bring on than a Cole Palmer who's like, I should be start. He might have an attitude where he's like, because he's, you know, because he's class and he's used to being the main guy going, I should be starting here. Mm. And he's a little bit pissed off. Do you know what I mean? All those things actually are, are quite important. Um, But yeah. I, 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 it's a great question. It's a great question. And I think, I think if, to answer that, if it's just as simple as that, and, I, and you don't, you can remove even the Cole Palmer attitude things. We don't know. We don't and know. Yeah, and, I, and, as I, yeah. As and that's just because he's languid. He's not, but he's nonchalant and he's sort of calm in his style, which again is a superpower, but it's, it's different. I hundred percent understand why you brought it up. I, I, I really do. But just in, in terms of how they play football, if you, if you aren't, if you're playing against low block against, you know, Denmark, for example, and they, you know, they they just they they want to sit back and force you to, um, to unpick them. Uh, then, you know, Cole Palmer could work, but there but there are instances. And would Cole Palmer, Cole Palmer do more than than or, or do something different than Foden? Ma- yeah, or Maybe Madison. Not. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or Madison, or Madison. Yeah, but Bowen. If we were chasing, if we were chasing, we were one one behind, or or even a, a, even ahead and, and and looking to hit him on the counter. Bowen offers something that perhaps. None, none of the none of the others do. Yeah. So I, 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 I wouldn't hate it at all if Bowen was a part of the squad. Yeah. It, who would I want in sign of Spurs? I'd, I'd rather have Cole Palmer over Bowen. But in terms of tournament football, is Bowen Bowen's useful? I think more and more there needs to be a better acceptance of profiles, and especially when you're building a squad, what you want is different profiles. So the other thing that came from yesterday for me was, do you if you've got, say you took Cole Palmer, say say in this squad you've got. Rashford who can play on the left and the right, Foden who can play on the left and the right, Grealish who can play on the left and the right, Madison who can play on the left, Bellingham who can play on the left, Watkins who can play on the left, Saka who can play on the left and the right. Why do you, why is there this thing that like well it, well it's going to be Kane and one more, when actually if you're going for a game there might be one where you need a profile where you need Watkins, or there might or there might be a profile where you're getting to penalties now. And you want Tony on or you want a bigger guy on as well. So like, that's the other thing. It's like, we all just go, well, it will be two strikers because you can't have three. But like, of course you can have three. Like if you've got other guys who can play in different positions. So I wonder if what, Southgate might take what you, both. How do you anticipate England setting up in the, in the Euros? Like what, what, I really think this the, international what, break has made me th- question a lot of stuff. I It's more yeah. like there's one or two where I'm like, I think you're... I think Conor Gallagher has just played himself out. I think he's out. Okay. I think Kobe made in his terms in. Of a system, in, in terms of system, what is he doing? I think I think that the midfield looked really, really good. And uh, I, I went for, people won't know this, but you, I was with Christian Hurley today. We were, I just went for, we went for breakfast. And um, we we're chatting about, we we're chatting about football and chatting about midfield and how, how it's changed since we were playing, like, you know, proper. And I was, I was saying, I remember, I remember when Giggs started playing centre midfield and I remember thinking, oh, that's horrible. I'd hate to play in midfield against you because the midfield that I know, and this is something I think we all have to get kind of get past and actually be excited about. And I'll get to England is going there is that. So when I, when I played and when a lot of people played, it's your centre midfielders are three touch players and they don't dribble with the ball. They get it. They move it. And then when Giggs played in midfield, he, he's a dribbler, right? But he's not got the same amount of pace, but he's still got that great understanding to beat a player. So he was getting oh. in the ball and dribbling it. And, and so for me, the idea of centre midfielder, for me to have to deal with him dribbling at me, but also where he's passing, that's a lot to deal with, right? Yeah, so yeah. what was so great about the Brazil game was, sorry, what was so great about the Belgium game was yeah. that that midfield of Mainu, Rice and Bellingham in an old way of thinking, Declan Rice sits there and he plays three touch. In an old way of thinking, Kobe Mainu kind of stays out of the way and spots things. And in an old way of thinking, Bellingham is an attacking midfielder. But they're all, they could mm. all play six. They could all play eight. They could all drive with the ball. They could all play a crossfield pass. They could all play a, a short pass as well. And that, the mix of those two things, when you then add Foden in there as well, that fluency of being the ability to dribble past players, which Kobe Mainu did for the first goal, and Bellingham could do, and all these guys can do. Alongside the, the other side of it was we felt glaring to me, and we looked so much better in terms of playing the ball forwards. And mm. be, and so I think sometimes you have to go with that, and go. This Mayno lad is the bollocks. 
and he, he looks... has to play ahead of Henderson, uh, Henderson and, and Conor Gallagher. Conor Gallagher was, was woeful and he made mm. Rice look worse. That's mm. a big thing as well. There's no chance that Foden can play midfield. I think it's like it's a box. Them. So you kind of, he, he's, he's attacking midfield like, and, and he comes and helps out. Because that was the other thing. I, so what the rant that we were kind of going on between us was that sometimes people talk about football and they're not thinking about um, the, the sort of little things that you think about in football. So by that, I mean, at, like at, sun, at a lower level, when someone throws the ball to someone, you just run at them. Because you'll get a tackle because you don't because you know their touch is shit and they know that so they just whack it right. Whereas at a higher level, you know that guy's going to have a good touch. So if I just run at you, you're just going to play it back to the guy with a throw and then he's going to play it back to someone else. So you you instead of running into them, you go you wait, and then the the next layer above that is that okay they know they're getting the ball but they know that you're not jumping in. So like there's layers to that. Mm. So. So that needs to be like kept in mind as well with with all of this as well. I think, and I think, I just think those guys are are like a level above in terms of these layers, and, and to still be able to sort of affect the game, change the game, and move move us forward as a team. Um, that's the three, and you, we saw it. I think we saw it pretty glaringly. Um, May news. Um, he's he's had an incredible season. Very difficult. Eighteen years old, and he's just excelled he looks like, like even in the struggling man united side he, he he looks like an outlier in terms of someone who, who who understands what his role is and what what he needs to do in order to give manchester united the chance the best chance of winning the game and even when like experienced players around him like rashford is failing and, and bruno might be fa- failing this kid just shows such a just a level of maturity that belies yeah. his age he's, yeah and a and a coolness, right? And I think sometimes that yeah. that's the thing as well. I, that's the other thing we were talking about football. Is like sometimes different players have state different status levels. That makes sense. And yeah. you'll go, we'll give it. And I, the problem I thought we had in the Brazil game is that Bellingham's status is too high. So he's the guy. Get the ball to Bellingham. He's our attacking Not- guy. So everyone's trying to get the ball to him. And the other thing in terms of that status is then Bellingham gets the ball and he looks and he goes, well, Foden's miles over there. And Watkins, he's not, I don't think Bellingham's totally certain about Watkins. But what you do see all the time, and I bet everyone listening to this will know exactly what I'm talking about, as I say, anyone you know, who's played, is that sometimes if are people in your team, there'll be two guys that just, they like each other. They like, they want to pass to each other. Like, mm. uh, and like, so QPR, the great team we had with Tarap. Tarap wouldn't pass to it, and he'd never pass to Sean Derry. He'd always pass to Ali Fowlin because he'd get it back. And yeah. or or he'd be able to find him in a different way. And Bellingham, when you talk about Foden, Bellingham, there's a lot of guys that he won't pass to. He will pass to Foden. And he passed to Foden all the time. And so that's another thing I think Southgate will have seen here is that Foden's got to play centrally along along with yeah, Kane. Yeah, definitely. Because I did, Bellingham I, bounce a lot with, along also, with him. Yeah. Also, you've got, you've got a, 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 a midfield... That has no fear. Yes. Do you know yes. what I mean? There's no, there's no failure imprinted in those players. Rice's trajectory to wherever. He, I mean, even if he fails to win the league with Arsenal, which God willing he will, but his trajectory is one that's 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 rising, and so is Manu, and obviously Bellingham's is. He's like considered probably to be the best player in Europe at the moment or the world. Therefore, so you've got a midfield there. If it is those three, it's definitely two of them, right? But if it is those three. That would be that. That would make complete sense, and that's exactly why Southgate won't do it. It will be Conor <laughs> yeah. Gallagher start. You well, know he will. <laughs> so, well, so that's that's where it's like I think the Southgate in out thing, right? Which we're not going to do. But it, the the thing where you can so Neve said this yesterday. We had this similar conversation yesterday, and she was saying she was of the thought that so first of all with Southgate, she's saying I'm getting to a point where I understand that maybe maybe enough's enough because he needs to be able to get more from that group. I, I wonder if he, I wonder if he, he knows exactly what he's doing, and he's going to play the team that we probably all want to see, really. And I think that's why Bellingham played so many minutes, and why Foden played so many minutes, and Rice played so many minutes. He wants those guys sort of playing together. Um, it's not those guys though. Is it? It's the additional one. It's that 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 conservative pick that he always makes, right? Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. That's what he's about. That's what he's been like. He, I don't. I, can you but see that's, a world where he? So well, that's it. That's that's the question. That is the question. Because right, be that. Because 
Neve was saying, I've always I've always believed that Conor Gallagher should be the third midfielder because she believes that the third midfielder needs to be that combative, cautious one because that's international football and that's Southgate and, and so on and so on. And she said, like, what what do you think? And I was like, no, I don't think that. I think you can, I think you could play if you wanted to. And I don't think he will because I think he wants to be, he wants an out and out left back, which which could be probably going to be Chilwell, which worries me a touch. But you can play. I will play. You, you, you can play, you can play, you play a box. You play Maynu, Rice, Bellingham and Foden. And it's exactly what you're saying. And this is the final question for Southgate is stop being concerned and let them be concerned about you. And that's where yeah. we are now. And that's what we need yeah. to, that's what we have to be. The, needs, the concern is that the goals come from us making stupid mistakes. So are we going to be safe enough to stop that? I don't know. It needs a sprinkling of pep or, or something more realistic of Postacoglu, where he's going like, we, that's his whole ethos. He's, he's, he's the polar opposite of Southgate. And and there are failings in what he does because he's he's so well so he's so he's so intent on attacking and making sure that they have to be scared of us. They need to be talking about us. They need to be reactive to us. If you just sprinkle a little bit of that on on Southgate, I'm saying a little bit less conservative. And you know, you might look at his body of work, and I'm sure he does as a pragmatist, looks back at his body of work and what he's achieved in inverted commas for England and go, I'm pretty proud of that. Like he, yeah. he's got us to finals and semi-finals earlier. We haven't been in for decades. But do you know what? That's that's a great point because if you if you look at the body of work, there's a lot of things that you if you did that then make decisions. And so I, as I say, I watch those every goal from those tournaments, and it's the tournaments that matter. And then and then we sort of looked at these players and and some of the players that have been really crucial for him time and again have been Henderson, Maguire, and Sterling. And so, and two of those, he's kind of, you know, he's stuck with, but he's evolved with, with the, with the other ones. But also it's been built on, if we've got a really great team and we don't concede, we'll probably score. And even if we don't score, we haven't lost. Mm. That is cautious, but that's also maybe because it could be considered like winning football. So when you pick, when you pick Henderson, do you think? I think he'll, he'll take, take him. Right? I think he'll take him. Yeah. I think Gallagher. Think I think should? Gallagher drops out. For sure. Do you think he should take him? Yeah, we had this conversation as well. Um, I <laughs> sorry. Let's, let's move on. Listen to the podcast. No, no, Listen I enjoy. I enjoy talking about it. But like, no, I, I think there's. Again, we 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 disagreed on it. I I I totally understand why he would take him for for sporting reasons solely. And I think he's already made his decision that he is going to take him. And again, if you look at the body of work, he's crucial in 2018. He's yeah, very that, useful in 2020, and he's brilliant in 2022. I know that's not there. Got to move on. We've got to move on. You I can't but, just. Go but I don't think he. I don't think he. For someone who's just going to be in the squad and play 20 minutes and not going to start, I don't think he. I don't think he needs to move on from him because I think that's the thing. That's the difference with Sterling. This is a really good point. I think Sterling's a bit cold and is a different kind of leader. I think he's a leader, but he's a different kind of leader to Henderson and Maguire. And I think that's why he keeps Henderson and Maguire. And also the other thing with Maguire, and again, looking at that body of work, is that set pieces. Maguire is absolutely crucial with set pieces. And they win, a lot of the games are tight. Like even the, the England-Italy game, which like he gets a lot of heat for. Italy's goal is from a set piece. So... Mm. Like that, those things matter. Those things all add up, and I think he really does take that all into account, which leads to it being pretty frustrating. But the question is, come on now, we've got Kobe Mainu, we've got these guys, we need to just go and batter people. But and and you I think to make we can a statement in the group as well. Make a statement, and, and you know, yeah, make a statement. Beat people well, be convincing, and um, and then from a knockout perspective, you, you know, if you get three wins in a group stage or two wins, two good wins and a draw. You're buzzing. You're buzzing going into into the into the knockouts. So yeah. that's what needs to be happen. You slap you, up just the on first Henderson. He's not, Go on. he's not gone down the. He's not gone down very well in uh, in um in in Holland in Amsterdam. Has, has he not? He's getting no. He's getting some what, stick. He's not playing well. Says all he does is. 
Uh, I don't think he's playing how he plays. Is he's playing his game? But it, in, uh, for Ajax, they have a different idea of what a footballer should be and what he, a midfielder should do. And he's come under criticism from pundits and whatnot, saying he, all he does is pass sideways and backwards. Oh, really? Bear I did mind, see the. I, I saw the interview. That, did you see the interview of the guy going? Don't you think you guys should have played um, forward a bit more? And he's like, well, <laughs> "Yeah, I mean." <laughs> Really? You're asking me that now? Like, come on. Um, it, was, it was like, who is it that Sherwood asked Paul, Cole Palmer said, you, know, you need all new players? Yeah, you need better players. Around, Cole Palmer, well, yeah, yeah. Guy was like, wait, mate, come on. Come on, man. Fucking idiot. I know you can't say that, but I can say that. You're a fucking idiot, Tim. Yeah. Do you want know yeah, to, the not, best thing, I had a conversation moron. with Tim Sherwood once. I I, I, um, I said, we've got this guy on loan, um, Adele Tarrapt, he's from your lot. What's it, what do you think? And he went, he's fat. <laughs> Is that it? And yeah, I was like, okay. You say, yeah, I mean, he's decent, but he's fat. Do you think it was... Um, which was true, which was true, but a bit basic. It, it's like, a bit like Tim. Was he pieing you off because he didn't want to give you the time? Because, like, well, we had a long walk, so you, be- you better talk to him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I see. It seems to get over it. Uh, if um, Do you... How do you feel about Man City, Arsenal? I know that's a dangerous moving- question to ask you. Awesome. We're moving towards the area of season where I sort of put my Manchester City hat on again. Sure. Um, last year, glorious end to the season. Spurs were just non-existent. Uh, we actually were in free fall. The whole club was imploding. And so you just think, like, I'm not getting much from watching Newcastle batter us 5-1. Or um, the game after in Liverpool, putting free past us in the first 19 minutes. It's kind of, you, you're left, Jim, and you may know this. I don't know if you have ever experienced this, but imagine watching your team and that they're so bad that you feel nothing at all, right? That's where I was at the end of last season. But what was quite mildly interesting was the fact that Arsenal and Manchester City were going head to head, weren't they? And uh, so That's every tight. single goal that Manchester City scored and Arsenal conceded, it was like watching Spurs. It was like it, it became as important. So I guess moving towards the end of the season now, that's where we're at. I think um, I haven't watched a great deal of Arsenal cards on the table because I get nothing but bad feelings watching them win. Right? It makes me feel sick inside. Um, and nor have I, you know, the the because this I... is it now. This is it. You know, when you like the the bottle conversation that we've had a few times, it's now. The time is now. And the one thing... Feel like that. They don't feel like... No, they don't. no, I agree. It's not the same conversation. No. Whereas last year, I was convinced they were going to bottle it. This really? year, I'm, I'm certainly not... I'm worried as a Spurs fan, genuinely. They don't look like or play like or the way people talk about them. And the impact that Declan Rice has had, they don't look like the team that, um, that, that will capitulate again. Um, Do you know what I think What does that mean, Jim? I think, mean? It, so I don't think they're going to lose many games, right? Yeah. And I, I think it is different. I do think it's different. I agree with you. What I was wrong about, because I'm, I'm always of the idea that like one game doesn't really matter that much. Mm. But they are obviously big games as well. The thing that I think is interesting with this one is that it is off the back of an international break. And therefore, the build-up of momentum, like, the air in that sort of hot air balloon of looking to sort of sail off into the sunset of victory was sort of like they were yeah. blow, they were going they were getting that you know when you you know when you see the hot air balloon, it's like bah, bah, mm. getting loads of them and Arsenal they were they were about to like hover up into the distance and then international break it's like it's like they got the ropes and you pull them back back down again that's just why it's pointless that's why it should be like they should remove them. Well, no, so this is good for you because Arsenal have now lost the hot air Maybe. that was there, right? So Appreciate now, it. this game away from home at Man City, where they have had, I'd love to know the list. I know, I think Haaland dropped out, De Bruyne dropped out due to injury. I, I don't, it seems stupid for them to even start the game to then go off. But what, why should I, they Walker, be? They but Walker and Stones, you feel like. I'm sort of almost like, are they actually injured? It's like, I know that would be such a dangerous thing to do, you know, with so many people watching. So I, I think they probably are a touch injured. I would be blown away if both teams don't have every single player that was available before who goes in available after. I, I think so- it should, a club should be able to go, we're not giving you our players. Not at this time of year. You can have them in October. You can maybe have them in January. 
But at this point, we're not releasing our players for international duty for two friendlies. I'm sorry, there's just too much at stake. You can have your meltdown. Gammons can have their meltdown. Everyone can melt down. We're paying their fucking wages and their cost of fortune. And our legacy and their legacy of footballers are going to be dictated about what happens in the run into this season, not against two meaningless friendlies that have no bearing on the international tournament in the summer. Clubs should just say, we're not sending them. You're not having them. But where does that stop? You do that with one or two players, then everyone, you know, say someone like Watkins. Ollie Watkins is, is, Ollie Watkins is more important than any of those players for yeah, his club. Just, they shouldn't be able to pick them. Pick your development players, pick, pick whatever. Don't have them, James. Is the answer is do not have, the, <laughs> but, have them. Yeah. Have I mean, them. that's where it's when maybe you take away the games. Take and away you the games. Go, yeah. This is how, look, you're going to train. This is how we want you to train. We're not going to train any more than you would train with your club. I don't know. I think it's a I little bit dangerous, but I think or I you just move away the mark, move away from March. Do you do when's what's what's late enough but early? What's after um, the start of the year but early enough for you? Then February, we, start of February, sort of January, uh, uh, maybe January. I know there's an incentive, there's sort of a break, a winter break, isn't there? Off sorts. Yeah, where do you want your break? I, I mean, on, honestly, what I want, what I want is absolutely no international breaks at all during the season. Go into the summer, shorten the season down. Have it end by early May, so you played all your games in a short amount of time. Then you give the you give him the FA can arrange as many fucking friendlies as they want. Then, and then you give him a six week period of which he needs to train his team and get his team ready. There is no can anyone remember or can Southgate take anything away from the friendlies that were played or the qualifiers that were played in fucking September? <coughs> but what he could do. Well, this is what I'm saying. It's like take yeah. away qualifiers as well. All the best teams just play in every tournament. And then some of the little teams should qualify if they have to, if we have to have them in there. He doesn't mean that. He doesn't mean that. I kind of mean it. Like, what's the point in Georgia being there? What's the oh, point? Yeah. They're just going to get battered. We've lost Sorry. him. Sorry. We've lost him. <laughs> We've lost him. That's shame. Um, it's a dream, isn't it? It's a dream, but fuck, you know. What's the point? But yeah, I think... For that, for like the loss of momentum there, but I, I think as in terms of it, like the consumer, in terms of a bit of variance and actually a break from the Premier League to not have non-stop Premier League for that whole period, I think is actually yeah, yeah, good yeah. for us all because we're all like, yeah, it's back or whatever. Um, but that Super game, cool. but coming back to the game, I think Man City, Man City Arsenal now for Arsenal, I think more so because of that element of momentum. And it and that I was listening. I've been watching a lot of things recently, and th these sort of ex players do talk about momentum a lot. Because if they if Arsenal win that game, it's on. And I think even if they don't lose it, it's on. But if they lose it, there will be that that naturally like there'll be that feeling of oh no, like oh no. Will they lose it, Jim? <sighs> I. I would expect Man City to win it. I think I don't think Arsenal are going to lose. Genuinely, I think they're both all the way. How much? Quite happy. How much? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but they'd be doing backflips, you'd imagine. But what? Mm. But how much of that, Jim, is reality? Given that you've watched a lot of both teams, or how much of it is my fear just playing into it that I'm that, oh, that oh. I don't want it to happen so much that I think it might might do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I think um I think it's so close between the two of them I do because I think I think Arsenal are like as good as anyone at stopping someone else playing the way they want to but are they uh, uh, better than ever, everyone else in terms of breaking them down and getting the goals themselves like they've been slapping teams but they've been slapping teams in turmoil over the last this calendar year oh. um so this is different this is different but that they have the set piece thing is a great thing for them because that's that way of finding goals and then you kind of have that shutout. It's a bit comes back to Southgate a little bit in the sense that like in those tight games, it, it will probably come down to something like that. Um, I think, I think they're in a really good place. I do think they're in a really good place. I think it's a shame that they've lost that momentum. If they'd gone straight into that game, then I think it would have felt a lot different. And I think that then you can kind of going into, into Man City's back garden, you're thinking, they should have the season pros to get it done. But there could be a changing of the guard here a little bit. I wondered about that. Or I got put in my place a little bit by uh, someone who, who um, educated me on the fact that De Bruyne apparently has been is struggling with an injury again or was, and therefore you, and he wasn't in the 
in internationals was he so that kind of adds to that and but i felt like in the liverpool game he looked leggy like he didn't have it if that makes sense so i'll yeah. be intrigued to know if if that happens again in a game like this you're like oh is it like these sort of games are now passing him by instead of him being the guy that makes the difference which he did even a year ago and it might be just a year where he's not had the same amount of football so he's not back up to his standards but th that could leave the door open for for arsenal do doing something i think kai havertz is crucial i think kai havertz is really really important um because he needs to be able to affect the game for them and i do feel yeah. like arteta think i think i wonder if arteta's I think he's got maybe these new ideas. I think he's so good, mate. I know you don't, obviously you don't like him. I think he's bloody good as a, as a manager. I think it'll be a draw probably. And we move on, which will be good. But that's why, yeah, I'm doing my, I'm going to do a final predictions on the three. But I was like, oh, should I do it this week? And I was like, you can't do it before that game. Can't. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Top four. Who definitely won't Finish fifth, Flav. Finish, who won't finish fifth? What, Out of, what do you so, mean? you know, they do like, what do they do? They do start, what bench, mean, whatever, right? Yeah. You've got Man United, Tottenham, Villa. You have to say right now, one of these guys won't finish in the top five. Who do you think that would be? Well, the obvious thing to say would be, um, would be Manchester United. Um, sure, sure. sure. But their form is no, no, uh, it's no worse really than than both Tottenham and, and Villas. They have sort of turned a corner to some degree. What's their run? Um, like? Look, Ooh. Uh, it's not Man specific. So they got away, then Chelsea away, then Liverpool. Brentford, then Chelsea, Newcastle. Liverpool, Bournemouth, Sheffield United, Liverpool, Burnley, Liverpool. Palace, Arsenal, Brighton. Oof. But then Spurs and Villa have both got really got tough, tough ones, right? There's enough football left. Everyone's got to play significant games anyway. So, um, and Spurs in our last performance against Fulham was that was probably our worst worst performance of the season. It was dire. It was absolutely toilets. So, um, and you know Villa have I think they've lost. They 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 they, they, they drew their last game, didn't they? Just after the um the, after we lost, they played. I can't remember they played the next game. Villa, but they, man, they didn't capitalise on the fact that we got battered. So it's very yeah. close, but um, we, it, just on the amount of points that, that, that Manchester United need, they'll have to require us to lose a couple or drop points twice consistently, and they'd have to win consistently. It's difficult for them. So it's between me, us and Villa, I think. Ooh! It's not What's a, a, how's, a Spurs, how's Spurs fan base? Everyone all right? I think generally quite happy, yeah. I mean, like if you think about how we... Where we were at the start, or well, this time last year, in complete disarray, and 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 Poster Coglu's come in and turned it around completely. Um, we didn't have we had a we had a, a sporting director that had been uh, sacked, uh, well, well, actually banned for thirty months from global football for cooking books. We got a a, a chairman in Daniel Levy who was supposed to be stepping away, now having to find a new head coach, a new sporting director, plus sign players because our squad was desperately thin. Well, not desperately thin compared to others, but it was thin in terms of what our aspirations are or what we hope to achieve. So it just seemed like too much work to do to have even... We were kind of writing this season off. And Postacoglu's come in and, you know, he's, we're now been touching distance of a top four spot or a Champions League spot if we get fifth place. So so it's, it's important to remember that context when deciding whether or not you're happy at Tottenham at the moment. There are fans out there that are disgruntled because that seems to be their starting point to be disgruntled about everything. Um, and, you know, being honest, in a weird way, the worst thing that happened is is winning those all those games at the start of the season. Because then you're like, hold on, hang on, we're going to win the league. Hang on a minute, good day. We should bloody win the league. Yeah? And the reality is we weren't there. We wasn't there. So um, so, so I, I think overall very happy that, you know, you've got players turning down major European clubs to sign for Tottenham. Um, money to spend. We've positioned ourselves in a good. In, in um, we, I, I think we're going to give Postecoglou everything he requires to be successful, and it's going to be down to how good he is. That's 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 the state of play currently, I suppose. Do you know, after getting slapped, uh, the last game's Fulham, wasn't it? After getting yeah. slapped, do you know? Um, 
you know what was the best thing that happened was the fact that it was the year anniversary of Conte to just to allow yeah. everyone to go oh yeah <laughs> yeah sorry it was horrific yeah. a year ago so let's just chill yeah um yeah 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 look, and look, someone said to me we 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 said a similar position to that we were last season but playing good football is kind of where certainly where I was at like let's just change the ethos around the football club let's make it feel good to follow our team again after four years of Mourinho and Conte and not only has he done that he's exceeded that um could I ask a question oh, the chat yeah. is talking the chat's asking for um us to talk about bridges I'm, conf- I'm, I'm confused can someone explain what on earth you're talking about Wayne bridges yeah what's his name what's the comedian bridge chat bridge chat Kevin people bridges. want us to talk about bridges I don't get it do you, Let do me, you genuinely not get it, or you? you no, I genuinely don't get it. Am I missing something? You, I forgot something. you haven't seen the yeah you know, the the bridge in Baltimore that got hit by a container ship and now fell into the sea. I haven't seen that. Fucking, he's so busy. The boy is busy. He works hard. It's not his fault. He's working. <laughs> like, this is global news, James. For fuck's I'm sake! Fucking hell. I'm, I, it's shocking. I am. Sh- do you know what happens? Bam says she'll be reading the news. I go, tell me. Can you just tell me it quickly? <laughs> yeah. Trying to stay on top of it. Is um? Is you're better right? off. You're better off. You're better off. Uh, six dead. Oh, a bit more. Why, do, why do people want us to talk about that, though? I don't really know why they want us to talk about that. There's conspiracy theories now, and they're coming out that it was hacked and it was actually a, a Russian thing, and they hacked the boat to crash it into Baltimore for some reason. All right. Of all the... I, why, am, how am I getting? How am I getting in trouble? I mean, I mean, like... it's, mental. It's, <laughs> it's mental that you haven't even heard of it, Jim. I don't know what you've been doing because it's been the, it's all that's been talked about on the news. When? You just how long? You have, I'd say for 72 hours. Three yeah, days. That's bad. That is bad. <laughs> but, I but, love football. Though. But James, but if you're, I know this is the thing is, is I, 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 I envy you because I'd rather be in that situation. Yeah. Um, but you're just busy, mate. You've got lots to do. You're and busy. do you know what? I mean, I, I thought I knew my audience, but they want me to talk about something where people have lost their lives. I don't I really understand. I thought this was supposed <laughs> to be a bit of a, I'm <coughs> supposed to link people. back to fucking football chat now. Six, six, sick individuals. Hmm. Uh, top comments. <laughs> Okay. Um, I mean, I can read the article now if you want me to. No, I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to. Not. What am I going to offer? I thought, you know, I don't think there's much insight for me. I, don't no, know, no, I know no, very I'll, little on bridges I'll, or Baltimore. James, let me explain it to you in like ten seconds, and you have to have some sort of response, right? Okay. So what happened was there's a massive <laughs> container ship, right, going through a busy ask. shipping lane in Baltimore, right? Baltimore's. Uh, it sends a hub for vehicles, right? Bringing vehicles in and out, apparently. This ship in the middle of the night crashed into this bridge and all of it fell in the water. Right. There were six construction men fixing potholes That's on fun. the bridge. They're all dead. Um, Give us your response. That's really sad. I'm really sorry. Look, look, yeah, anyway, so let's, now let's move on. Let's move it on. Should, shouldn't be happening. Shouldn't be happening. Um, it'll be happening this day, mate. Football. Uh, right, this was top comment last week. Gear change, everyone. Gear change. Um, Prince Twinkle Jeff says, and this was the top comment, 197 likes, 10, and 10 replies, and actually there were good ones as well. Picking a football club was the worst decision I've ever made. It instantly made me massively rattleable, which is the word we coined a couple of weeks ago, for the rest of my life. James Williams uh, replied, agreed. I can't believe how open we are, all are about the team we support. I thought that's interesting. You know, like mm. there should be like there should be a rule that um like you shouldn't say who you vote for. People some people say that. Like you shouldn't discuss you shouldn't say who you vote for. It should we be should there be something similar in terms of who you support? Should you can not just yeah, not let people like know. Secret. Yeah. yeah. I mean it should be rude to ask who you support, and I do it often. Who do you support them, mate? Yeah. And then so often they'll go, Man United, oh well, they sort of Arsenal. That's that. That, that's all right. I'd say. That's so you're after. But yeah, typically, no. But what's your top six scene? Um, it would be like openly shouting out your biggest weakness to a room full of bullies. And then to even wear a T-shirt dedicated to your greatest insecurity for all to see. <laughs> funny, really... It's a funny thing we enjoy, isn't it? Uh, Palmer Man said, I was speaking with one of my friends the other week and she said, why do you care about football so much when it doesn't actually matter? The best answer I came up with was, I don't know why. Um, Dildo Baggins said, replied saying, out of all the unimportant things, football is the most important. And uh, James G said, yeah, it makes, I it mean, makes it has it... the most Im- Sorry, go on. It just has the most impact, yeah, for something that means very little in the grand scheme of things. It means everything. 
it's, I mean, it's a big business. And James G said, it makes a little more sense to get defensive if the team is your hometown. But when you're some lad from Essex who supports Liverpool, which has literally no English players in it, why care? They don't even have the remotest connection. Now, before... And, I, and do you know what? I, I can hear people going... <gasps> Liverpool fans going, no, no, Harvey Elliott and the, 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 the other English players. Trent. Mm. Someone did that. Okay. Suggest. So cleared that one up mm. don't worry mm. um mm. so yeah it is a weird mm. one is it that would you say p- see this thing picking a football club some of us don't get yeah. to choose some of us don't get to choose uh, yeah i didn't get to choose i lucked out massively i could have my dad could have fought with anybody yeah i've seen more trophy wins than you though i want jim <laughs> should we move on yeah, uh, Roll Gary. He said last week that the last video I did was probably the most disrespectful video I've ever seen. Oh God, what uh, now? But do I, I just thought was uh, the only reason I put that in there was um, what, what was firstly, disrespectful? Oh, we did a combined eleven, didn't we? Uh, was the sort oh. of first of all just to just to remind me to say get a fucking life, and secondly <laughs> to uh, say honestly, don't worry about it, and thirdly the word disrespect in football. It's quite interesting, isn't it? There's a lot of like. You do sometimes listen to a sort of. You, you, you just. You, you kind of. You can make an assumption about where we're at as a human race and a society, a Western society, when you see how fans react to what they consider to be injustices in their football club. It's like alarming. Yeah, it's a funny world, we're in. You say you've been, you said you've been taking a bit of a break from Twitter. Um, I've um, yeah, well, I got myself a bit addicted things. to it. Like, I'd never really been that addicted, and then here, you know, here I am. Um, I asked people for their uh, one week bans. We've got a few yeah. here. Uh, Ali, Ali's probably, hopefully, still here. It says uh, international break discourse. Fuck England squad. Shit, picking a random player to call overrated. This is interesting. I, I, I haven't seen this. I've been able to dodge this. I them. Well, no. So uh, apparently Thierry Henry was the flavor of the month here. Um, Lampard versus Gerrard versus Scholes, et cetera. It is some, a big part of the football scene these days in terms of... Thierry, sort of, Thierry Henry is definitely overrated. Definitely overrated. Oh, I thought you might have something to say on that. He's... Um... Like they talk about him like he's like he's Maradona or Pele or Ronaldo levels. That's, that's how they talk about Thierry Henry, Arsenal fans. I mean, he's the best Premier League player of all time. Uh, is he? Tonight? Not the best. Yeah. Not the best striker. Hey. Given question. Isn't it? Yeah. Very different. Okay, Very right. different. Look, I tell you what. You can have that if, <laughs> if I can have best striker in the Premier League. Fine. Fine. But good what you said is nonsense. Mm. It's also it's like it's like well he's in the best team, the fucking invincible team. But of course he's going to be great. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that was that was that leads me on to the um, I would say the best the best manager who never won the Premier League. I'd like uh, there'd be another one where it's like best striker that never played for a top six team would be an interesting one as well. See so who, who are those people that knock it about and they were unbelievable. Yeah, that is good. Yeah. Striker would be good, wouldn't it? Maybe do striker next week. Oh, so I've we, got Calvin, Calvin. No, hang on. What's his Calvin name? Lewin? <laughs> huh? Calvin Lewin. No, Kevin Phillips. Kevin Phillips. I did think Kevin Phillips briefly. I did think him. Yeah. I think it's a, because who never got the step up. Who never got the step up to to play that sort of level, but consistently score goals year after year. Um, I think I need to go away and put put a list together. Uh, but yeah. there's, who is yeah who always score goals? The so best manager, to, the best manager who wouldn't win the league though. So the best saying. manager to never win the league. Here are some options: Rafa Benitez. <sighs> Hang on, I'll give it written down. Got Rafa Benitez. You've got uh, Louis van Gaal, but I don't want to go down that route of like they did well elsewhere. Like it was like they were they had a great time in England, but they never won the league. Consistently successful in the Premier League whilst not winning the Premier League or, or football. So Rafa Benitez, Harry Redknapp, Eddie Howe, Sam Allardyce, Jerry Francis. Chuck him in there. Did well, didn't he? Did all right. Uh, Bobby Potter. Robson. Bobby Robson did well. Arteta hasn't won it. Arteta's a good shout. Arteta's a really good shout, yeah. I thought the answer was, the answer I got to, 
And I think it is the correct answer. Mm. Pochettino. Reese says, these are shocking shouts, Jim. Reese, I look forward to hearing loads of better names than the one I've just put forward. But the correct <laughs> answer, <laughs> the correct, correct answer, I believe, is David Moyes. Oh, it's boring, isn't it? It's not a video. It's not a title for a video. You wouldn't do that. Not on YouTube. You wouldn't no, go. That's, that's where you don't this put the name in it, isn't it? You put the blank. Why? Blank, 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 blank. Lit, is the lit, best, little question mark. Yeah. Is the best Premier League manager never to win the title. Bit long. Look, bit he's, long. He's, he's, he has. What he look in order, in order to be a good Premier League manager, you need to be consistently employed, and there's no greater than him in that respect. That's a good point. Unai Emery, people saying he's only had one good year, hasn't he? Only had one good year. I think um, Emery's not the worst shout. Not the worst shout. It's hard though, isn't it? Like that's what the point I'm trying to make here is that if you are if you aren't one of the big boys to stick around for a long time. And be difficult. successful within your means is incredibly difficult. Incredibly he won a difficult. Version of a European title, literally two years ago or a year ago. Was it a year ago? A year ago, yeah. So, Ali says, "I think that only great Premier League managers win the league." Bollocks, Ali. That is utter bollocks, and I'll tell you why. Because it's like going is if you have everything that you need to to build a building, right? You've got all the bits you need, loads of money to do all that stuff, like loads of staff, everything you need. You've got a better chance of building an incredible building than if you've got less. It's literally fucking that simple, okay? Yeah, that's why if Rob Edwards, if Rob Edwards keeps looting up, he should be manager of the year. Fact. Ali, Ali wouldn't have that. Ali, Ali's so, so close-minded, such, such a close-minded little individual. Yeah. Such a, you know... Get the, get the blinkers shit. on. You got the bl- <laughs> wow, got the blinkers on. Brendan Rogers, maybe a shout. Brendan Rogers did well. Won an FA Cup. You motherfucker, Ali. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, D- Daddy Daddy Berenson chucking Ali under the bus here, uh, which we've never gone for Ali till now. Um, but here it comes. Ali says also, Ali also hates iced coffee. So no, I'm with him there. Hundred percent with him there. I mean, on the right day makes sense. Too cool. Um, well, he failed, didn't he? Ultimately, failed with an embarrassment of riches. Ultimately, with all of those, do you know what I, I thought of? What about Silver, Marco Silver? It's all right, isn't he? It's okay. It's okay. Quite like he's, him. Yeah, he's good. Yeah. Think of all the players that you've you've mentioned, Hodgson. I'd have I'd have two cool probably, and Marco Silver, Poch. Mm, probably, uh, if you can't give it. To- you can't give it to Poch but and not give it to Martinez. No, is it Martinez? Sorry, who do we... Yeah, Rafa Damn. Martinez. No, what's his name? Benitez. Fuck hell. Right. You can't give it to, you can't give it to Poch instead of Benitez. It's Benitez. He won a fucking Champions League, for fuck's sake. With a bad squad. Yeah. Yeah. It's Benitez. And did great with Newcastle. Do you know what? The correct answer is probably Rafa Benitez. You're right. Mm. David Moyes. If David that... Moyes beats Le- if they beat Leverkusen. If they you beat saying Leverkusen. This. Stop stop saying. Leverkusen haven't missed the last league. Oh, they have been falling if they somewhat beat... a little bit. <laughs> if they beat Leverkusen, but West Ham fans forevermore less. You can't. You've just less. got to accept that he's going to be your manager forever. If if, yeah. if... <laughs> you're trying, you were like if, you know, like Nicky Hawkins, he's not wanted David Moyes for some time. It, it, like the full time happens, and he'll turn to he'll turn to his mates, and you go, guess that's it then. Guess we've got David forever. Yeah. And, and I, I but, don't think that's the worst thing. But the bloke, the bloke, there's a bloke who rang up Talksport, and they had all their fucking old school Talksport pundits like fucking Alan Brazil and Andy Townsend and Pascarino. See what West Ham fans have got to be more accepting is is that David Moyes is a good manager. They're not going to get better than Dave, Dave, David Moyes anytime soon. So they just accept it. And a, a West Ham fan rang up and went. Mate, you can say all that. You'd have to go and watch it every single week. Go there, pay an absolute fortune in a stadium that isn't up to par to be bored out of your mind. Because every now and then we'll get a big result against a good team by playing defensive counter-attacking football. We just want to be entertained. And there's a man who experienced that football for years where you'd put Tottenham on and you'd have your phone in your hand like that because that was more interesting than waiting for us to get the ball back. So I'm with the West Ham fans. Fuck them. Okay. Uh, let's run through some 
Oh, I've, got, I've literally got my kids are going to be out of school in like four minutes. Right, we'll, we'll leave it there then. If you do want to see some of these one-week bands, they're they're brilliant. They're um, they're here. Enjoy. There they are. Um, well, do, do, do a couple while I'm, I'm packing up. Okay. I'd, yeah, I'd, yeah. Yeah, good chat. I'll do it myself. The, so one-week band, Joey Barton, I saw in there. Follow me. I've muted him now. Can't see it, which is good. He followed you? Oh, no, not muted. I've got rid of him. No, no. Whatever. Was... Um, where we go? Thomas Martin, people crying disaster after England's last two games. We touched, I think we touched yeah, on that. Yeah, indeed, yeah. One week Talk back. of England winning the Euros. is happening, though. Is happening. Daniel Rolf. Yeah. Any human who mentioned who, Maynou having a bad game we, yesterday? Who said that? Could, could we win it? I think we, we are going to win it. Anyone crying over flags? Uh, we speak about that in the mailbag this week. Quite interesting take from Flav on that one, actually, which I agreed with. Um, mm. Who else? Football Twitter. Jordan Henderson discourse. She touched on briefly. Sorry about that. Just, just people are just generally sick of that. Um, but we don't end on that note. Um, so anyway, Flav's got to go, and I hope you enjoyed the podcast. And f- come on, Queens Park Rangers and Luke Stokes. If you see me, fucking walk the other way, mate, because I'm your B- Birmingham fan. Big games Friday, and I am going to slap you up, you mate. Better. Slap you up. You, I, I, I'd be well up for you for kicking the shit out of him. Just, just full disclosure. Yeah. Well, okay. It's happening. Don't worry about it. Right. See you yeah. later, everyone. Good. Goodbye.